Republicans are zeroing in on the border as a midterm attack issue on Democrats, seeing a political opportunity in the Biden administration's decision to revoke a key restriction known as Title 42. That's according to The Hill's Emily Brooks and Julia Manchester. Julia joins me now to help break down how the issue will play out in November. Julia, thanks for being here in thank, studio. Thank Exciting. Thank you for having me. Yes, good to be back. Yeah, wonderful. So let's talk about this. You know, I don't think, uh, for a while at least, I think immigration has been on the back burner a little bit with the economy, obviously Ukraine, kind of the end of COVID. But, it, you know, it's always an issue Republicans want to talk about uh, because I think they've correctly figured out it is something mm -hmm. that helps them a lot, particularly with the base. Uh, so what's going on now with Title 42, which I, you know, for our, our viewers, is a, a law that is essentially designed uh, to prevent immigration from countries where there is some disease risk, although it's a little funny because COVID is here <laughs> just as much as it is in any <laughs> South American country or Latin American country. Uh, so, so talk about, uh, you know, what's going on now. Yeah, so essentially Title 42, which is a Trump era policy that was put in place during the pandemic, um, is set to be repealed by the Biden administration next month in May. So, you know, we're seeing Republicans wanting to keep this in place and, or um, saying that if we're going to repeal this, there should be a plan because it allows, um, you know, immigrants to it allows Border Patrol to essentially stop the flow and uh, detain immigrants for a while. Um, so with this being repealed, um, you're seeing Republicans really going on the offensive, saying, that, you know, we already have a crisis at the border. We're already seeing a flow of right. immigrants coming over from Mexico and Central America. There needs to be some plan in place. But what's interesting about this, Robbie, is it's not just Republicans that are saying this. It's moderate Democrats as well moderate Democrats that are particularly from states where uh, they're facing relatively mm -hmm. tough re-election bids. Mark Kelly in Arizona, Maggie Hassan in New Hampshire. If we want to go down the ballot, Henry Cuellar in Texas's 28th district, Vicente Gonzalez in Texas's 34th district. These are all Democrats who essentially want there to be some sort of plan in place if it's going to be repealed or keep the policy in place. It's a very tough re-election issue for Democrats right now. We've seen that before this decision was made by the Biden administration, Republicans were very much zeroing in on this. Well, now this gives them even more of a messaging do, point. Do Democrats like the ones you mentioned feel like the national party, the Biden administration is just like screwing them at every turn, just <laughs> putting them in the position where you know they have to be playing defense on all these issues? Uh, for, you know, from the culture war to, to immigration mm -hmm. to the economy. Uh, I imagine it's got to be frustrating because, you know, we're looking at probably a midterm where I, I think even the most optimistic uh, expectation is Democrats sort of getting wiped out. Right. Like if anyone is left standing, it will count as a victory. I mean, not not literally, obviously, some Democrats will <laughs> yeah, still be in yeah. office, but do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I think right now the Biden administration and a lot of these moderate Democrats are in a difficult position. They're walking a very fine line, and I know that's a bit of a cliche, but it is true with situations like this. You know, the president is under pressure from the progressive flank of his party, who he needs to turn out, and obviously under pressure for the moderate flank of the, his party, who he also needs. Um, you know, for these uh, moderate Democrats who are speaking out against this, though, it does put them in a very difficult position, especially for someone like Mark Kelly, Henry Cuellar, Vicente Gonzalez, when your state or district is quite literally on the border, it makes it that more tough. And uh, so, you know, when even though these Democrats are moderate and speaking out against this, um, it makes it that much easier for their Republican opponents to say, well, look, the leader of your party is, you know, pro open borders. It's so right. easy to tie them to that right. from a messaging standpoint. Point. So it's a difficult position they're in. Are, are Republicans starting to talk at all about what you know what they will do with respect to our immigration policy or our border policy when they have control of the government again? Or is it just like, nope, just let's stay focused on what the Democrats are doing and why that's wrong? Well, I think, that, you know, in terms of a campaign messaging standpoint, yes, it's focusing on Democrats. But we have heard uh, some, you know, points about what they would do if elected. I think he would see a return of a lot of Trump era, era policies like Title 42, for example. Um, they talk about 
being tighter on the situation at the border, more restrictive in terms of who comes over the border. So we haven't gotten too much in detail yet. I think it you know varies from state to state, um, district to district, but it definitely does seem they will obviously be more strict. Mm -hmm. Well, and I remember when when we were talking about the you know the whole kids in cages mm. uh, moment. And then it, you know, it turned out some of those images were actually from the Obama administration, yeah. and also that you know the Biden administration wasn't making a a radical right. break with that policy. Um, is that is that issue still being talked about or? Yeah, I mean, I think it goes back to Biden being sort of stuck in the middle of the progressive and moderate flanks of yeah. his party. You have the progressives who are actually criticizing the Biden administration, who criticized the Obama administration for their policies on, you know, detainees and, you know, those so -called kids in cages and those images. So I think that's, you know, where how the Biden administration is in a very difficult position as to how to deal with this because I think policy wise or Joe Biden, you know, would be considered a moderate. However, in terms of how he's been policy making and such, it seems like he's trying to cater to the progressive wing of his party sometimes. Right. Well, and I think he is. I, I think Joe Biden is truly a man of moderate sensibilities, yes, yes, uh, tendencies, mm -hmm. inclinations. But of course, it's not clear, right, how much he is actually in control of the party. You know, he's the he's the figurehead. He's mm -hmm. the face of the party. But, you know, who makes the decisions, who briefs him on issues, who tells him, well, we're going to focus yeah. on this. I think it tends toward younger, more progressive, you know, the woke, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call them, uh, because that is that's what they're passionate about. That's what, you know, they hear from on social media. That's how they fire up the activists. But it, it's. It's, I think it's obviously not what interests the, the, the kind of voters that form the most important part of the of the Biden coalition. Right. I mean, Joe Biden is in a very different Democratic Party than yeah. when he was a senator or even when he was a vice president. Yeah. And you use that term Biden coalition. That's so important because we saw, you know, so much debate as to what won. What was the reason why uh, President Biden won Georgia? You have a lot of moderates pointing to that black voter turnout, which was so incredibly important and always is incredibly important to um, the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Black voters, particularly black women, I think are you know the backbone of the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. But you also have progressives saying, well, you know, pr progressive voters, young voters also were driving that turnout in states like Georgia and other states across the country, particularly with younger people of color who uh, identify as progressive. So I think there's sort of this internal debate as to you know who is behind the electoral recent electoral successes of the Democratic Party and really who gets a stake uh, in decision making. Right, and and you know what about the the Hispanic vote, which I think is yes. often wrongly characterized as like we bring it up when we're talking about immigration because oh the Hispanic community right. must care so much about immigration that must be their number one issue and if you're being you know extreme on immigration mm -hmm. that must be turning off Hispanic voters, but actually the Republican Party did increasingly well with with Hispanic voters in the last election cycle. And, uh, you know, do, do the Democrats still kind of orient their thinking around? Yeah, we, we, we got to win Hispanics. So so we're going to have a, you know, a pro immigration policy because that's how we win them when I think that's been like totally discredited thinking. Yeah, look, uh, the Hispanic vote is so interesting because, uh, you know, first of all, they're not monolithic. I'm from Florida, for example, grew up in central Florida big Puerto Rican population. Uh, you know, Puerto Ricans in Central Florida tend to vote Democratic. But for example, if you go further down south to Miami, you have the Cuban vote. And uh, Cubans tend to vote more conservative. But of course, there's a generational shift within the Cuban voter bloc. You know, younger Cubans are, we tend to see voting um, more liberal or increasingly more liberal than um, older generations. So we can't say that the Hispanic vote is a monolith because there are so many different parts. And, you know, to your point, Point on immigration, I mean, so many different issues are impacting them as well. For example, um, and you're seeing Henry Cuellar deal with this in Texas's 28th district, abortion. You know, the Hispanic population tends to be uh, heavily Roman Catholic right. or um, evangelical or conservative Christian. So for someone like Henry Cuellar, you know, it's a rarity to see a Democrat who is very much uh, anti-abortion, but for his district, it actually works. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, obviously the economy, like everyone else, 
else Hispanics are being impacted by inflation. They're being impacted by health care. So, you know, it is definitely, I would say, a bit of a, a, a generalization to focus in on immigration. But I think we're seeing a lot of that conversation around Hispanic voters, particularly Hispanic Republicans in immigration right now, because we saw President Trump do so incredibly well with Hispanic voters in uh, South Texas and in those yeah. border communities, because I think there's this, um, you know, uh, uh, assumption that Democrats make, say, oh, well, they're probably going to be more liberal on immigration when some tend to be more conservative. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a different world out <laughs> yes, there now. Yes, it is. It is. Well, Julia, thank you so much for joining me, and we'll have more Rising right after this.